$100,000. Sounds like a big chunk of change to repair a tiny old church in St. Catharines, Ontario, but no dollar amount can match the church's rich connection to North American history. The Salem Chapel was founded in 1820 by African-American freedom seekers. Its most celebrated member, none other than anti-slavery activist Harriet Tubman, who spent 10 years living in St. Catharines, the final stop in the Underground Railroad where hundreds of slaves were freed. The church will be getting that money through the federal Supporting Black Canadian Communities Initiative. And joining me now to talk more about the importance of that church is Rochelle Bush. She's the resident historian at the Salem Chapel British Methodist Episcopal Church in St. Catharines, Ontario. Thanks so much for being with us, Rochelle. Oh, thank you, Gisela. Thank you for having me on. So tell me a little bit about Harriet Tubman's life in St. Catharines. She lived there for a decade of her life. Yes. So Harriet Tubman um, was known as Moses. So what she was doing, as you know, was going to Maryland, helping freedom seekers um, escape to Canada. So while she was living here through um, a number of scholarly accounts, we know that her first winter in Canada, she spent in the timber forest chopping down trees. Mm. She operated a boarding house. She was paid for hire to go back to Maryland and rescue people. And we also know that she more than likely worked in the tourism industry, so the hospitality industry. Right. And so tell us about her connection to the church and how that church continues to honor her memory. So Harriet Tubman's family, while they were enslaved, were Methodist. And throughout a lot of her narratives, she was known to be a Methodist. And when she lived in Auburn, New York, she joined the AME Zion Church, so the African Methodist um, Zion Church. So here in St. Catharines, it was an African Methodist Episcopal Church. Harriet Tubman became a member. And we know that by deduction. We know what churches she didn't go to. Mm. So there were eight churches in the downtown core. She didn't attend the white churches, and she didn't attend the Baptist church. Right. And so what is the current state of that church, and what will this grant mean for you? Gisela, to be quite honest, the church is badly in need of repair. So you see it through the photographs. There's a lot of security risks. Mm. So the $100,000 is going to help us renovate the church to preserve it for future generations. And that's what our goal is. We want to maintain the church because it's a monument to our ancestral legacy, and we want to preserve it. Yeah, tell me more about the, the this particular monument is so important in St. Catharines because I understand that it's, it's pretty much the only uh, historical site in the city. Yes, it's the only national site in St. Catharines. So it's... Um, an, um, a monument structure where we receive visitors because a lot of people want to go where these famous heroes worship. So it's a sacred destination tourist attraction as well. I was going to ask, is the church still in operation? Does it have a congregation or is it strictly a tourism site and is it popular? I mean, I didn't know about it until we did the story. Well, the, the church is still a religious institution, first and foremost. And then, of course, we have um, the visitor attraction. So that's what keeps the church doors open. We mm. only have eight members. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and so, so with, small congregation. So with this money, will that only be for the physical structure or will that support any sort of programs or, you know, tours or will it change the way that people can visit with this church? No, it's strictly for a restoration. So we're hoping that we have enough money to cover it and it will not be going to any programming. So we may be about ten, fifteen thousand dollars short of all the repairs that we want to have improved. Oh, really? And yeah, and we'll just reach out to local community groups if we need additional money. Do you think Canadians know enough about Harriet Tubman's life in Canada and just about Black history in general? No, I do not think they know enough about Harriet Tubman's life in Canada. She is a person of national significance. And no, um, people do not know enough about black history in general. Before we go, I understand that you have a personal connection to Harriet Tubman and other freedom seekers. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, my connection to the church is that my great-great-grandfather was the minister in charge for a period of time when Harriet Tubman was an underground railroad conductor and living in St. Catharines. Wow. And did you get a chance to talk to your family or, I mean, it's your great-great-grandfather. I don't know. What are the, some of the stories that are passed down? Well... I'll be honest with you. A lot of the stories that were passed down, they should be on historical record. So I've tried to trace them and they've been debunked. And one example is 
the two times great grandfather that I was just mentioning, I always thought he was a runaway slave. Oh. Turns out it wasn't true. He was actually a free black living in South Carolina. When they passed the 1850 fugitive slave law, he relocated his family to St. Catharines. On my father's side, my paternal side, they were escaped slaves, so freedom seekers from Virginia. So stories like that. If the paper trail's there, you can debunk them. Yes. <laughs> That's so interesting. But it is always nice, I guess, to have a little bit of a connection. Do you hope that through Black History Month uh, this year that people will take the time to learn more about uh, Canada's connection uh, to the, not just the Underground Railroad, but other uh, um, historical uh, people in Canada? Yes, I do hope people will take the time to look into that. And that's because we've been here for a long time as well. So many of us, including black loyalists, we've been here for the same amount of time as other settlers. So our history is just important, as important because we help build this Canadian foundation, this great country. Rochelle Bush in St. Catharines, Ontario tonight. Thanks so much for joining us and good luck with the rebuilding of Harriet Tubman's church. Oh, thank you so much.